<laughs> hey guys, it's Eddie with Tier Level. And Sean with Tier Level. <laughs> now I have to introduce him, so that's what it is. I prefer a warm introduction. <laughs> well, hey guys, we really appreciate you watching. Um, this is a, a kind of a new concept that we're doing and doing joint webinars now. Um, just for a simple fact is that the one thing about tier level that we pride ourselves in is we have so much talent across the board and which is really going to be the topic that we want to talk about today. Do you have the right talent in place to achieve your goals and objectives for the year or do you just have a bunch of warm bodies? Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you that is a very hard place at the crossroads when you come to to determine whether or not you may have employees that you like but can they deliver? So yeah, and that's really something you know we experienced this firsthand when we were building a multi-million dollar operation in the restoration industry, and it's just very important that you do like when I came in as a director of business development, I inherited a team, I inherited people already in place, and you really have to ask yourself, yeah, these people are very friendly, but are they performing up to expectation to make this business grow? And you know, coming in as a director of business development, you know, your first priority should be, do I have the right talent, like Eddie? said and that was typical um, for us as we had some okay players we had some some good people but we had some people that just weren't a good fit not necessarily by an all performance but maybe the culture of that person wasn't fitting in with the organization so it's very critical that you look at all those moving pieces because you have to build a team that can win the Super Bowl that can win the grand prize of where you're looking to go and that kind of started by hiring the right people one by one by one and then the people that couldn't keep up or didn't want to adapt to that vision, they slowly get faded out, or you need to make that decision quicker rather than later, which sometimes we've learned from experience, we held on for too long, not getting the results that we were looking for. And we made that even along the way as we thought we were hiring some of the great positions, but it all kind of started by bringing in, you know, Eddie was one of our first rock star performers that we brought in. And then from there, we just started trying to find like-minded people that could adapt to that culture, learn in that culture. Not necessarily everybody's gonna have the same talent, but are they willing to learn and grow and get better? Right, and I think it's really important too that whenever you take a look at the talent that you have, are you putting the talent in the right places or territories necessary for them to be successful? You could have taken me and put me in more of a rural situation even though I grew up in a small town. It's not my forte. My forte is to be very aggressive and, and to get in and have very high level conversations with business owners, CEOs, directors of facilities, things like that. So they mirrored my personality and put me in a very aggressive territory in downtown and midtown area. We took other talented members and put them in, in their respective territories where we knew that they, could, that they could flourish. So it's very important that you know your team, intimately know your team about what their strengths, their weaknesses are and how you can play into those and develop those kinds of things. But we've made mistakes in hiring mm -hmm. um, people that we thought were going to be absolute rock stars, and they they just weren't. They fizzled out, and so. But at the end of the day, Sean is a director of business development, and then he left to to form Tier Level, and I stepped up to his position to be director. So we both walked in the same shoes. We had to ask ourselves at the end of the day. Did I provide this person with all the tools that they need to be successful? Did I hand them all the lures in the tackle box? And did I develop them? Did I motivate them? Did I educate them to the best of my ability to be successful? If that answer was yes, then you have to come to the, the old adage, you have to either fish or cut bait. You have to say, okay, if I've done all of this and they're not performing to expectation, Maybe A, they don't possess the ability to perform in this industry, or B, they just don't care. But either way, they don't need to be here, and I don't need that sentimental value. I need to understand that we, a salesperson should always be an asset and not a liability. So if they're not making their validation, they're not hitting their numbers, do they, do, do they have the ability? Do they not care? Either way, let's get the right talent in there because if the organization's gonna grow, the right talent has to be in place. That's absolutely right. It's very important to have those metrics in place that you're monitoring and watching these people. Too many times we see that organizations are just going with the flow. They're going and, oh, when was the last job? They got that job, but they're not really tracking the number. Um, there is a quantity versus quality of, of what type of jobs are coming in. You really have to look at all those different metrics and make sure they're being tracked and observed properly. Sometimes those relationships just come naturally through the, through the business when the sales rep just happens to be standing there. That's still great that they're getting that customer service, but you want to make sure they're really cultivating, building those relationships to the next level to get more business, more referral, 
and so forth. But you know, our, one of the biggest mistakes I've made is just holding on to the wrong people too long. I've talked about that in blogs and other podcasts before, but you know, it's sometimes it's hard to get to that point. And with tier level, we're finally at a team where we're 100% vested and love everybody on this team to the ability of what we know is getting done and the culture and every of those components is where it needs to be right now. Last year, it was a different story. We had to make changes. We had to make improvement. And it was a good thing for us as an organization. So don't be um, afraid to make those decisions quicker, especially if you're a business owner or a head director of a department, especially when sales, because you're being validated and judged and, and observed on how well that team performs. So why waste time with a warm body, like Eddie said at the kickoff of this video, when you could actually have a rock star in play that can make you more money and your organization more money for the future. You know, it's the same as any relationship. You know, you don't want to feel like in, when you look back after it's all said and done that you settled. You know, you should expect the best for your organization and, and that's going to that's going to filter downhill um, with the culture that you provide, um, the vision that you provide, the leadership that you provide. So if they're not if they're not performing up to the way that you need to and you've educated them and given them your very best, you know, don't be afraid to say goodbye. It's going to be best for them um, because salespeople want to overachieve. And let's just face it, this is a very, um, a very complex industry that we work in and it takes a very special talent. Are you bringing in people that want to be students of the game and bringing in people that want to learn to be better, to find out of the box ways to be successful when they're told no, or are they continuing to follow up, they're tenacious, they're hungry, or are they just complacent and stagnant and they're dragging your organization down or keeping them at the same place? Growth takes talent and you have to go find talent and you have to trust the talent that you have. So, you know, we would be happy to help with that on our digital recruiting side. Um, Sean, if you want to elaborate a little bit about that before we close out. Yeah, so we, you know, we, we put a lot of emphasis on digital recruiting and making sure we're finding, you know, better applicants, you know, with Indeed and all that clutter out there. Sometimes you just tend to get a lot of uh, people looking for their next job. So we really have created Restoration Hire and some other channels through Google that can maybe find some more industry niche utilizing your social media channel um, and SEO channels as well where that information is getting out there. So, you know, feel free to reach out to us, Sean at tierlevel.com and Eddie at tierlevel.com. And we'd be more than happy to share with you or give you some insight. Um, you know, we love talking about this stuff. So don't hesitate to reach out to us at any time. Hope you guys are having a great day. We'll talk to you guys soon.